Hey, good afternoon, folks. Uh, JP here, beyond the briefing, and I want to give you a little tour. I, I just couldn't help but do this. I've just been dying to do this. I know most of the time we're talking about uh, weather on this particular uh, video series, but I broke down and I bought uh, Flight Sim 2020, and I want to give you a little tour, and you can configure the weather the way you want it with this particular uh, piece of software. Here we are, Birmingham, Alabama, runway 6. I'm in a Diamond DA-40, uh, and we're going to fly this around Birmingham. And the first thing I noticed when I lined up here on runway 6, looks pretty realistic, except the control tower does not look like the Birmingham Airport control tower. It does not look like Birmingham Shuttlesworth International Airport's FAA facility. It uh, looks more like Atlanta or maybe Orlando, the cab itself of the control tower. So just kind of coming up with that. Here we are, we're on the takeoff roll, taking runway six. And when you, we look out to the, to the left of the airplane here in just a little bit, you're gonna be looking at the Air National Guard and the Army National Guard ramp, Alabama National Guard. And it looks pretty realistic. Uh, you're gonna see that in just a, a few moments. We're about to rotate here off runway six and I'll, I'll bank it a little bit to the left so you can see this. Cool stuff. By the way, I've never flown a uh, Diamond DA-40, and certainly uh, not on a sim, so I may be good at this, I may, <laughs> may not be. We'll, we'll give it our best shot. Uh, I'll try my best not to crash the airplane. So there I am, I'm banking it a little bit to the left, and you can see the hangars there with the, uh, the Air National Guard. I don't see the tankers, I don't see the KC-135s but you'll see that a little bit better as we kind of uh, turn and bank a little bit. You can certainly uh, tell the color of the buildings over there, the kind of that uh, reddish looking uh, top that you see with a lot of the uh, military construction. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of a north turn here and around the area. And as I continue giving you the tour, uh, we'll turn kind of uh, lined up almost uh, with a uh, downwind of runway 36 or kind of overflying 36. And then we're gonna make a uh, turn toward the west. And we'll turn toward where the BJCC is located. And you can see uh, kind of the uptown area. We're just kind of paralleling the interstate there. You can see the downtown buildings. And just giving you a little look around on the uh, DA-40. There's the interstate, some of the, uh, some of the elevations around there side. Uh, to the right side of the airplane, you can see the airport. All right, so aiming right now at downtown Birmingham as we fly around, airspeed above 80 knots. So I think it's trying to give me a, a hint that I am going a bit fast, that I need to be uh, climbing at a little bit steeper rate, but we're not gonna do that because we're doing a tour of the area. So I wanted you to be able to see the scenery just to kind of get an idea how realistic or maybe not realistic as you might think on this software. I, I, I tend to think it's pretty good. There's a few things that are kind of no-brainers that have been left out. And you're going to see that coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, on Red Mountain, uh, where the television stations are, they don't have the antennas up there. And that's kind of odd. That's a kind of a landmark in Birmingham. I'd have the WBRC sign and the antenna. The sign may be up there. The antennas for the TV stations are not up there. And anybody that flies around Birmingham, Alabama knows that ATC will always say, use caution for antennas on Ridgetop. You hear that all the time. So we're aiming toward the city and you're gonna see some of the familiar buildings. And they did a really good job with this as we get a little closer. Now we're aimed right now toward the uh, Sheraton and the Weston Hotel, the downtown area, also the uptown area. I, I think I can see if I look real close, is that Texas de Brazil? I think it may be. Um, Bacon are a hard left toward City Hall and Lynn Park. You can see the old AT&T building, the Harvard Center, the Regions Bank building, the new ship uh, tower which has been Wells Fargo and Wachovia and everything else over the years. And we're gonna come, there we go, right over the Harvard Center and aim toward UAB right now. And you can see some of the uh, medical buildings. I mean, this is really good. I mean, this is a, about as realistic as I have seen with anything, but notice you would typically see the television towers if you were on this heading and we're not seeing that. I'm gonna turn it more to the left right now. We're gonna be heading toward uh, Red Mountain Expressway. 
and also St. Vincent's Hospital. You can see St. Vincent's. We're going right down this university uh, down there on the left. There's some cars down there too. It's pretty realistic with the uh, the AI cars. There's uh, St. Vincent's and let's head to the right and head north and we're going to find Highway 280. Get on 280 and head down uh, by the summit area and then take it back to the airport. What it does in terms of weather, this is pretty cool. You can configure this with what the weather's doing right now. You can configure it with what kind of weather you want. You can have clear skies, uh, thunderstorms, snow, rain, low visibility, you name it. So as a training tool, uh, you can kind of get an idea of, uh, of what some of these situations would look like, perhaps even feel like if you had all of the, the feedback mechanisms uh, at your home simulator. I don't. I have basically a computer monitor and a, a joystick, so I don't have all the goodies there. What's nice about the joystick, the DA40 has a stick and not a yoke, so I'm right at home uh, with my home configuration. There we are looking down toward the uh, Mountain Brook area and over toward the airport. And over to the right here, this is, uh, looks like Brookwood Medical Center. And we're going to be looking on 280. You're going to see those uh, where the Birmingham, there it is. Birmingham Waterworks is located uh, where they have the kind of a treatment plant there, facility, those ponds that you pass all the time on 280. Going right over that, and the summit is coming up here on the left-hand side. We're going to go right over the summit, and if you look in the distance, you can see Grandview Medical Center. One thing about around Birmingham, you almost have a hospital everywhere that you can align yourself with the airport, either a current hospital or one that is uh, no longer in use. So here we go, going straight toward the summit. And we're kind of moving along at about 120 knots or so over the Mountain Brook area at this point, Cahaba Heights. Looking right down to 80. And when I get over the summit, what I'm going to do is kind of hook a left turn and we'll head back to the airport. And I will do my best to attempt uh, a halfway decent simulator landing with the uh, Diamond DA-40. Here we come. Here's the summit. We're getting down low. That's the apartment complex there next to the summit. There's the building over where Chewy's is with kind of the dome on it. Now, it'd be super realistic if you had all the people waiting outside. There's Belk down there and uh, some other stores. Here we go. Making our left turn. We're going to go find the airport now. And this is all obviously just doing it VFR. I'm not looking at any of the any of the navigational tools on the uh, diamond. The trees look pretty good. Well, that looks pretty neat. So just kind of turning back, uh, looking down, where am I there? Okay, uh, we're gonna find the airport, play that game, find the airport. I'm gonna line back up with runway 36. One of the nice landmarks to get into 36 if you're on a visual is the old Trinity Medical Center. And guess what, it is on there. You can actually see the old Trinity Medical Center, and it looks pretty realistic. I can see some of the buildings in downtown off to the left. There's a little tour of the Diamond Cockpit G1000 uh, system in there. And uh, I'm going to give it a little bit of a right turn, and you'll see the airport beacon, and then you'll see the, uh, the uh, end of runway identification lights on runway 36. I can see there's the airport kind of flash in there. And I see the hospital. And what we're going to do right now is line up with 36. There's the airport marker. Uh, you know, if we had these in real life, wouldn't it make that a lot easier when you're playing that game? Find that airport, these big things that stick up out of the ground. Uh, some of the, uh, the software in the airplanes, the glass cockpits anymore, do that. I've got these little flags on my Aspen system in the Mooney that pop up on the synthetic vision and do that. And you can configure the G1000s to do that. So it's almost like what you're, what you're seeing here with the uh, flight sim. So if you look in the foreground, right off the cowling of the airplane, that is the old Trinity Hospital. I jokingly refer to that as the final approach fix for runway 36 for uh, Birmingham Shuttlesworth. And we're going to attempt to give you a pretty good landing here with the uh, DA-40. Going to start getting configured and get the uh, first uh, selection of flaps. 
slowing down here just a little bit to the white arc so we can do that. Slow down to 100 knots, I think, is my uh, flaps uh, speed. All right, coming down on 3.6, looking good out there. And at this point, uh, tower would have already cleared me to land. We'll keep it slightly high on final. We do this with a single engine airplane. I always encourage students to do this uh, because of the homes here and also the, the terrain. If you lost an engine, if you're low, obviously you're going to have some problems. If you're a little bit higher, you might buy yourself uh, some time and might actually be able to clear the hill. So uh, if we're not on the instrument approach, we try to fly this one a little bit higher than typical. Not a lot higher because we don't want to have to die for the numbers or anything like that, but we keep it a little bit high. And slowing on down to 100 knots, we're going to start getting those flaps in. We'll come over the interstate here. Uh, Keep her at uh, right around 90 knots here on final, and we'll start slowing down once we cross uh, the interstate. On glide slope, keeping the uh, numbers pretty much centered in the same spot on the wind screen of the airplane. And again, I could totally botch this landing. Uh, it's a simulator, and also I have never touched a DA-40, but we will see what we can do. All right, short final. We're on less than a mile final here for runway 36. Coming in, coming in, coming in. Keep her coming down. Keep her coming down. Power's coming to idle at this point, and we're going to hold this pitch, hold this pitch, hold this pitch, not let it land. A DA-40 likes to float a little bit. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and she's down. All right. There's that lack of nose wheel steering, so we got the rudder trying to take uh, get that back on the center line. And I want to tell the folks that we're going to be parked over here at East Ramp. So the controllers at this point would say, exit at Foxtrot, contact ground, or stay with me on this frequency, taxi to parking. And here comes taxiway. Uh, Foxtrot. We'll cross Foxtrot and uh, Golf and head over there to the east ramp. Uh, that looks pretty realistic. That looks like taxiing back in like I do multiple times per week on runway 36 and we'll make our right turn here onto Foxtrot. Something else I noticed, uh, uh, the software does make the general aviation hangars look a little bit better than they do in reality. At the, uh, at the Birmingham airport. I don't think our paint jobs are quite that pretty, especially those hangers over there on the left side. Hope you enjoyed this. Good little ride out there. We're gonna bring this airplane to a stop out here now that we've crossed the, uh, crossed the line. And uh, all right, you guys, be safe. Fun flight.